Hey guys, this is Mikro here. I'm back with a video on another tier list for New World like Wars and PvP in general, uh, but mostly talking about Wars. It's been two weeks since I've done one, so I think it's appropriate to make another, because every two weeks it, not, it changes, but not a ton, but changes enough to where it's worth talking about again. Uh, this time, uh, like last time we added in the, the alt tier list, because I thought that was important, this time I added in a description of like what categorizes something as being in each tier, and then I added at least one class to S tier that I think is the best thing to run for that class at the moment. In terms of like changes to like how I'm rating builds, I've kind of realized that most builds that are not just, this is like from a support and a tank standpoint. Supports and tanks generally can either put people on disease cap or run capped alone at this point, and if they cannot, they're not as good of a support build. And, but there are some support builds that can do both and still have survivability, and I think those support builds are the, the best ones to run, as well as tanks kind of overlap in that role. Uh, so that's like a, been a little bit of change in those like kind of hybrid-oriented builds that still are able to like live tend to be able to carry harder than some of the other roles that just can do well in one thing. Like, for example, one thing that I, I play a lot, so I played IGVG at first, that's really good at putting disease out. It's not as good at living, but it's still decent at living from a tank perspective. And then I swapped to IGBB at some point because I wanted to live better, but then that's not as good at the disease perspective. And then you don't have the Oblivion that can strip things. You don't have the Ren that VG has. But then if you play BBVG as a tank, then you can kind of do both. And then you can make that compromise work by basically taking off some of the damage perks on BB and upping your con a little bit. And then you have wars like I had one last night where went 11 kills, 356 assists, which is the first, like the number one assists and whatever by a decent margin and like no deaths. So uh, in, a, in a real war, which is rare to see at this point. Um, but yeah, so there's like aspects like that that I think exist for multiple classes that sort of break the f why that class is good. But then there's like other weapons that are still really good in some aspect that are like the best in class of their aspect that are still good but I don't think they can carry as hard in general as some of the classes that can do more than one role. So starting to get into this list at this point uh, which I'll, I'll do like a, a comparison at the end just for for fun to see like how the, the old builds compared to the new builds but or we could start at the beginning, actually. That's probably a good thing to like look at from a high level. So on the left here is old, on the new one is new. Basically, I think the Greatsword Greatox is generally the best kill squad thing that's come out. Stone form for bruisers is basically a must-have at this point off of the detonate patch. Uh, just because detonate is basically garbage for 90% of people that run it, and I don't think people realize that. Uh, like, I, I got hit by a detonate last night, and it hit me for, like, 1 to 2k, like, on point, and I healed that back up in, like, one healing tick, and it was, like, that was your that was your ultimate that took a minute and a half to earn. So, like, I don't I don't think detonate is very good for most players anymore, unless they're an int-based class that stacks damage for that specific type, in which case it's okay, but it's not something that's, like, worth building around, like, these builds that we had before. That I thought were good last patch with great sword ice got where you charged that Nate at a guaranteed crit and like a 1.4 crit damage mod so it did a lot of damage now that crit damage but that to get nerfed to 1.3 and it does 10 percent less damage so it's just not damage that's significant enough to where it's worth building around anymore in my opinion but there are still some classes that could utilize it, like Fire Staff and Void Gauntlet can kind of utilize it because they have passive and power, which will apply to the actual uh, detonate itself. So, yeah, so there's been like some changes to the kill squad in terms of what's good. Bruisers, I'd say the, the Great X is good. Supports, IGVG definitely got a lot better because it's probably the fastest class at building ult. It builds it like every 30 to 45 seconds, it seems like at this point, especially with the storm bug being fixed finally. So your storms won't just override other storms half the time, and your storm won't just bug out, which is like a reason why I rated Pylon higher before uh, in the original patch. And I still think Pylon's good, but it's not good everywhere. And I think it's only like very good as a point take perspective, because 
then you're not also like ruining other people's storms and you still have like good ult charge with the pile on itself like better than average ult charge but if everyone's running one build or the other it's not as good which i have seen in some wars where everyone's running a pile on for some reason now <laughs> it's like no 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 that's not how you want to do it you want to do like half pile on maybe and then like half storm because the storm is still very strong it's just when you have so many that they're overlapping with each other storm gets a lot less value and that's where pylons are a really good replacement the storm still has some other utility like it slows people which is minor but it's still something and tanks uh i mean i added void gauntlet blunderbuss to being like another tier of being really good tank because it could put people on ren cap disease cap and live very well the great sword warhammer is up there just because it controls clump very well and it puts people on ren cap which I think it's between A and S. I'd put it in S because it's above what everything else can do on top of having good survivability. So it's like it lets you have more freedom to do with your ult. And you, you can do more with that build than you can in most other builds for that class. And it's not as comparable. Like Void Gauntlet Blunderbuss is the only thing that has like similar output in my opinion. Like it has the survivability of Ice Gauntlet Blunderbuss, but then has more util than that. Which inherently, I think, make, makes it another tier. And Ice Gauntlet Blunderbuss is still separates itself from the rest of the pack because it has good util. So that's why I put that one there. And then healers, I changed this a little bit where I put Hatchet up in S and I put Greatsword up in S and bumped Rapier down a little bit. Uh, reason being, I don't think healers could actually run from kill squads anymore. I think it's next to impossible. And the things that will buy you the most time to live are great Greatsword. <laughs> And uh, Hatchet, because Hatchet gives you the Undying for a little bit, which is a sad world that we're in. We're relying on Undying for healers to live longer, but that's where it is with how strong Greatsword isn't chasing. And then Greatsword's also good at countering Greatsword, because, well, there's nothing else that's as good as running away, so uh, that's where we're at. But doing a more deep dive, let me close this one out, I'm just go into here. So I, I already talked about which ones are were S a little bit. Kill Squad, uh, Blunderbuss, Ice Gauntlet. This is just like a build that can kind of do it all. It has insane damage output. It has really good survivability, which I think separates it from everything else. And the other aspect that it has that is very good besides the survivability and damage, which I would think already makes it like a two aspect, is the you can, you can basically just nuke clumps on your own with the with the grenades if you just throw them in there which just raises it above everything else so this is like it's like fire staff a, a weapon that can actually pressure off people in your back line pressure healers itself and it lives very well it lets you drop your con because it can live so well so it breaks multiple aspects in the game and i think that makes it inherently very very strong just due to blunderbuss perks being overtuned in my opinion and not being nerfed because ags uh, great sword great axe is like some more in this bit has less survivability the the big thing with this is the great axe like lets you basically have infinite range to get out of clumps so you can like really easily disengage and engage as well as having like util to uh, do more aoes versus something like hatchet i think is very very good and it is best in class at single target dps i think the great sword great axe is better at killing more like a more a larger quantity of people like the great hatchet might be better at killing one person but at the end of the day it is a war so killing more people at once is better and that's something that you can do with great axe that you can't just do with hatchet so this is like the the new light melee if you will and hatchet it's like a new thing that's coming around i think it's still very good it's a little bit easier to play but it's a little bit less of a, a carry ceiling but it is a uh, almost as good if not as good at, at living it's just the the killing aspect that i think hatchet doesn't make it as good but with great sword i think it just they can do two rules you have the bow which is very good at single target you have great sword which is very good at single target but they're like different ranges so it's like a combination like hybrid build that inherently just makes it strong and more well versed because uh, you can do almost as much as the hatchet but then you also have range on top of that so if someone tries to run away with you if, run away from you you pull out the bow you just kill them you can also just default to the bow and then switch to the the great sword whenever you want so it's like you have two different styles that you can kind of juggle between and that inherently makes it a little bit stronger than great sword hatchet which i think is a little bit more 1d musket great sword it's just awkward with the ranges basically that's why i put that there Bull musket, it's two weapons that can not do the same thing, but are very, very similar. So 
it's good, but it's not as strong as the other builds. And then anything with a rapier is like not as good anymore, basically. Some fun builds that are in here, Fire Staff, Ice Gauntlet, Detonate. Detonate scales better off of it, and this will hit for about 6k with a Fire Staff. Maybe 4 to 6k, I'd say, would be your base, and then if you have Empower, it gets up to 6k. With a Void void Ice Gauntlet, that could hit up to 7k. But the problem is, is you're running Void Blade, so <laughs> you have to like play close, and it's a little bit more of a risky weapon to run in general. And then you're, you usually drop the con a little bit if you wanted to run that, so you'd probably be 350 focus, 150 con with Void Blades. It's a bit sketchy, but if you find a way to make it work, that could be a really good carry build. It's still probably worse than these other builds, but uh, it's it's better than I originally thought it would be. And I, don't, I think it's the best way to build Void Blade at this point, as like a, you go for a detonate, because you can charge ult very fast with Ice Gauntlet and Void Gauntlet, and then you... you do like a heavy attack into a scream that should one shot most healers, which is a a thing that which will come back to the tier list like part. It has some problems with some benefits. I'd be a benefit of that. Fire stuff, ice gauntlet. It's it's like range and has decent AOEs, so it can pressure out healers as a clump in general. But it can't do as much more than that. Like it does not have as good one shot potential unless you're really good with ice spike. Spear rapier, I think, is strong, but it's just it's just inherently weaker than greatsword, so and it gets, just gets heavily outclassed by it. If you ran spear greatsword, that would be kind of interesting, but I feel like that's worse than one of these other builds. And then the, the builds at the bottom, I, I won't really mention the ones in green, are just usually just random stuff I've seen occasionally that doesn't make sense for this patch anymore. The detonate thing, which I talked about a lot last video, I don't think makes sense anymore, because detonate does not hit for a significant amount of damage, even if you empower it. Like it, this will hit for like 6k maybe, which isn't enough to where I think it's worth running. You'd have to have like a group of those, and that's like a very weird investment. I don't think it's worth doing to actually like have significant value. Uh, bruisers talked about this at the beginning, but stone form is just inherently makes bruisers so much better than they were before, because uh, they can be aggressive and not really worry about dying because they have that get out of jail free card. So then they can do so much more, and it also lets you just win the, the Warhammer stun battle. Like, if an, if you're going versus a bruiser that doesn't have stone form, and you pop the stone form, and they Warhammer stun you, and you Warhammer stun them, you win every single time, so you just, like, inherently just win. Which just makes it significantly better than every alt for a bruiser, in my opinion, in the game, especially with Detonate's nerf. Some people still, like, swear by Detonate being good for bruiser, I do not see it. From a deadly point perspective, the Detonate will only hit me for 1 to 2k. <laughs> It's not anything significant, and if you're hitting like a light healer based off tests that I've done, you'll hit like maybe four to five k, which is like good, but you shouldn't really be doing that as your role. You'll be hitting like medium players, and you'll be hitting like base like three to four k, which is like okay, but I don't think it's worthy enough to like slot an alt in there that will give you a fifteen percent run to do like three to four k damage, which is like almost the same amount as like one auto, maybe two autos, so. That's why I think Stone Form is significantly better, which is why I think Great Sword Warhammer in general is a little bit better than Great Axe Warhammer because you could be more aggro with this if you go into Right Tree, but then you still have the the benefits that you had with the other weapon. But that's if you're not running Stone Form. If you're running Stone Form, I think that covers up that weakness and it's generally better than Great Sword Warhammer at that role. But it's Great Sword Warhammer is still a very very strong strong role, and I think there's an argument for running groups of three Bruisers still with one Great Sword Warhammer and then two Great Axe Warhammers in them so that you put more people near Ren Cap and you have like a way to counterplay the clumps more with the Great Sword Warhammer. And then here are just some like builds that have been meta in the past, but Ultimate Chill obviously doesn't exist, so these aren't as good, but it's still like decent because it solves the problem of only having one cleanse pot like every 20 seconds, so it's like, yeah, it's okay, but none of these builds are really worth running at this point, to be honest. Supports, I think IGVG has become S tier, but it's very close to not being S tier, just based off the fact that it is the fastest build to build ultimates that I've seen in the game with the changes to Rune Glass, because every single thing that hits one person applies a Rune Glass dot and gives you like one more tick of alt, which just basically means that this just speed runs getting alts. And there's a lot of ults that are good with this, like the, the Bile Bomb's very good with it, the the AoE Root, uh, what do you call it, Rending Vines is really, really good with it. 
stone form not as good but you could run one of these two ults and get away with not having defensive because you have ice gauntlet so that inherently makes it better i think blunderbuss is a little bit worse it's a better as a tank build or a dps build if you have it as like this like hybrid support in the middle 200 con build then it's not bad in like medium 200 con but i don't i think the other weapons have better benefits uh if, like you, you still have decent damage you still put out disease but it's not like near the amount of disease that avoid gauntlet applies but it's still like a good rule i just don't think it's as good as avoid gauntlet mostly because it doesn't charge it all as fast but also because the disease is less the little bit increase in survivability is nice but if you're playing ice gauntlet, avoid gauntlet correctly you shouldn't be having a lot of this anyway bbvg i think is decent as a support but unless you're going 300 con i don't think it's as good uh off experience and if you're going 300 con then i'd consider that to be a tank build so if you're running that with like 200 con or 150 con then it's kind of a sketchy build at this point with all the amount of people that are running great sword and the amount of chase that there is in the meta you just won't survive you have to be able to deter people by just basically showing them that hey you did damage to me my health bar didn't go down so then they'll just like kind of not target you after that point and you can still outduel them because you have blunderbuss and blunderbuss is very strong a uh, pylon build still good i don't think it's as good as the other builds just because it doesn't charge all as fast in general but there's some circumstances where it does it faster but i think if you're going to run a pylon it's better to run that in a tank setup than as a support setup because as a support your aoe's are going to be doing more damage so it just makes more sense to have the aoe on that class and then put the tanks on pylon duty if you are going to do a mix of uh, pylons and normal storms and then these are some funny builds uh, the no scream is there because someone i know did that the other war and that was funny to figure out after. Um, but yeah, uh, tanks, Void Gauntlet, Blunderbuss, I talked about this a few times, but it can do every role support wants to do and be a tank at the same time if you go to 300 con. Like it, it gets people to Ren Cap and Disease Cap on alone without an ultimate, but you throw an ultimate on top of that like Vines and it can do so much carrying. It is actually crazy. Uh, which I had a lot of that last night, and I just did not realize how strong that was in this meta because I have not been playing on that server because there not, uh, have been as many wars, but that was like a, a war of two equalish skill companies, so that was very interesting to, to see. And then uh, Great Sword Warhammer is still very, very strong because it, it could swing clump fights and can group people super, super effectively. I'm not sure what ult is best with that build at this point. I'm kind of stuck between Vines... Uh, well, I'm stuck between Vines, Biobomb, and Stoneform. I prefer Vines the most, but Stoneform still feels very good with it, but at that point, then Great Axe is just better, so it's like, I'm kind of going between Vines and Biobomb the most. But it has really good survivability. The the, the Stoneform's nice, mostly because you go in with your Warhammer, and then you just win the stun battle, and then you have fun with that, so... But it, I don't think it really matters what ult you run with it, it's just inherently better, because it has... It can basically stagger people that are trying to commit to a clump like if i see a grav come out i just hop in that clump and i press the, the like the forward like the what do you call it calamity counter ability and then i get to three stacks of this and then i trigger that and it will stop people from nuking my clump basically so it's like sns but actually does something it's like the tldr of why i thought this build was good and then also when you're blocking with like that you're going to put people on 15 percent rend and then you could turn that into like a grouping people up into a, a pull with a slow into Warhammer stun. So it's like a very good combo build to new clumps, which is why I thought Stoneform was decent at times, because you can group them and then not really have to worry about your life when you swap to Warhammer and you lose the Path of Defiance, which otherwise you have to play for a lot. So yeah, uh, Pylon still very strong. I think this is the best other build, and I think this is the most common build that people run on point. And there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't think it breaks the game as hard as some of these other builds because you put people on soft disease cap and you live very hard. These two other builds already live very very hard. Like this war, I had the least deaths in the army. There's only one other person with zero deaths. Everyone else had like five to eight on my team, mostly for supports and tanks. So, uh, both of these live very very hard. Versus this one also lives hard, but then doesn't do as much. So I inherently think these two builds are better than this build because they provide more value to an army as a whole. But they're also harder than Master. Like there's a definitely a lower skill floor and a higher ceiling, I'd say, with those because you can die faster. 
with them, but if you know how to live, then you won't die at all with them. You just have to time your iframes well, and then you up your con a little bit, and don't really don't worry about your damage. Like it was so funny last night with this war where you get you get like at forty eighth with the stats of like eleven kills, zero deaths, three hundred fifty six assists. Like that's the forty eighth in the, the army, but that's just a war board standpoint. Why tanks just can't pad? Why tanks always have low rank? It's like literally impossible. It's just off damage, but. That's where that stands. Uh, Ice Gauntlet Blunderbuss without that I think is a little bit less for the reasons I said earlier where you generally want these builds on pylon because they're going to be overriding people's storms at times and that's bad. If you don't have enough IG users with the storms then I think it's fine to run it with storm though. Spear Greatsword, haven't seen a lot of it from what I've seen from it. It seems fine. Puts people on Ren Cap very, very well. Uh... Also CCs people very, very well, so it's between like S and A tier for me. Great Axe Warhammer I think is solid to run as a point tank, but I think it, it's like you run that as a bruiser setup and a point group, and with the right people it works very, very well, but I haven't seen multiple people do super well with it. I've mostly only see, seen one person named Lying do very well with it, and he consistently gets top five in every single war playing it that way, so... I think it's something that's to be explored, but I can't rate it higher because I haven't seen multiple people do it. I've only seen him do it, so from my perspective, it's, he's probably just a standout player versus that build being the standout in the role. SNS, I think, is just inherently weaker than Greatsword in every aspect in the game. Like, the util SNS has, and the, I guess the util Great Axe has, if you want to think about that way, is basically just weakens, which weakens aren't very strong and I wouldn't really consider it to be on the same category of util as disease and rent. It's still good, but generally it's not as good as disease and rent. It's still nice to have a couple of people. Like if you had like one SNS, I I could see being happy with that, but then you have to cut a build for an SNS and it's like what do you want to cut? And that's where the the part where it's not as fun. But I think Spear has a little bit more util than it, because it can knock people down, too. When when you stagger people, they can't do damage to you, so the weekend doesn't really matter. So I guess that's where I come around with the SNS. It's, like, it's not bad, but it's not great. It seems like very solo style. I don't see a ton of benefits in running that weapon. Then healers. Uh, I've talked about this basically all earlier the the healer meta at this point is survive as long as possible because you know you're gonna die and if you're not pressuring healers in this meta then i don't know what game you're playing because healers die very very fast like even as a heavy bb i'll, I'll pressure healers and i'll just die because they can't out they can't escape my range as a bb and i have like zero damage whatsoever and i got like maybe five or six healer kills like last where i was in so it's, it's just a live meta, basically. Live for as long as possible, but you will die. Unless you have people appealing for you, and those people that are best to appeal for you are usually Blunderbuss Ice Gauntlets that are in a 150 con setup. so Because they will like two to three top people that actually would try to kill you, and most of the people that would try to kill you are melee. so And they can also deal the bows because they have so much fortify. So that's why, but how those pieces kind of connect, I guess. Ult-wise, stone form... I mean, these are basically symmetric at this point. Stone form is if like if you're a bruiser, just run stone form. I don't think there's any questions. If you're one of these, if you're in a different role where you have like an option, I think bio and bot and vines are like the two that you switch between if you don't need stone form or if stone form doesn't benefit you a lot. Uh, it doesn't matter a ton which one you run, but if you're like a build that puts people on disease cap naturally, I would argue that it's better to run vines. So like BB. VG, it's better to run fines because you're already going to put people on disease cap, so you don't really want to keep doing that. But if you're a build that puts people on ren cap, I think theoretically it's better to run the, the bile because then you don't double down in the same aspect. Ren cap is 30%, disease cap is 50% for reference. Uh, so if I was Greatsword Warhammer and I had to decide between these two, then bile is generally better than vines on paper. Uh, and from a practical perspective, the lockdown aspect of Vines is still very good, but usually you don't think about that aspect as much in a war. So, like, locking people down is good, but I, th I think from a support perspective and from a tank perspective, you're trying to put people on the, the Ren Cap and the d Disease Cap as much as you can. So that's from what I've seen, but there haven't been as many competitive wars so far uh, in the last two weeks as normal, so... 
it's a, a little bit skewed towards OPRs because that's where most of the content has been that I've seen. So, I mean, let me know what you guys think if I missed a couple builds. I think this is like fairly comprehensive. Uh, also, if you're playing the scent, just switch. I have some, seen some people actually iframe stuff with the scent, which is super cool until you realize that they land like a second later and just die anyway. But yeah, uh, that's where I stand with all this stuff. And I think those hybrid builds that can kind of do more than one thing are generally the strongest like solo carry builds. And if you have people that are good at those, they'll inherently be more value that are people that are have a build that is good at one role in particular because the alts basically make it so that your build can do more than one thing at this point like you don't have to just build one guy to be super super tanky because you could build like a vgbb to be super tanky and do something else so it's like why would you just go on and tankiness when it could do more than one thing it's like the the reason why sns went from minimally viable to not really viable because it's like why would you slot a 500 con sns when you can slot a great x Warhammer, Greatsword Warhammer, and have like the same effect basically. Like, I don't, that's with the, them applying like an AoE weekend and Fortify and stuff. Like, I, I don't see the, the util of SNS really. You still see the build like occasionally, but the once you realize how big the range is on the abilities, you'll see why like great SNS isn't really viable in PvP. But yeah, that's where all these builds are, and we'll see in another two weeks if things change or if everyone just goes on break because holiday season and then maybe there are no changes but we'll see you then